Okay, this is a very brief review of what happens during DNA replication. Let's start with the material that we are going to be replicating, that is the DNA. This is our DNA. And remember, DNA will always have directionality. So we have two strands of DNA. The two strands are complementary to each other and have opposite directions, as we all know. Okay, this is our DNA. The first step in DNA replication will be scanning this DNA, searching for signals that will indicate where DNA replication has to start. Those sequences are what we know as ORI regions, or ORI sequences, or origins of replication. So you need to scan for origins of replication. The enzyme that will be doing that scanning process, moving along the DNA, searching for ORI regions in the DNA, is or ORC, origin recognition complex. So that's the very first enzyme that we're going to process. Now, for this particular demonstration, we're going to draw the ORI region as a little rectangle in purple. So now, when the ORC finally recognizes the ORI region, so this is ORC, when it finally binds to that ORI region, it's going to then bring somebody else into play. That somebody else that will be brought into play is MCM, which is a helicase. MCM is the protein, therefore, that will have the ability to open up the DNA. So the binding of MCM to the ORI region will then trigger the opening of the DNA. And remember that the MCM helicase forms kind of a donut around one of the two strands of DNA. So MCM will only embrace one of the two strands of DNA, not both of them, in order to open up the DNA. But by embracing one of the two strands, it will be sufficient for MCM to actually open up the DNA. Now this process is creating a bubble in the DNA, but in order for this bubble to continue being opened, you need to have a heel case in both sides of the bubble that you are creating. Therefore, we're going to draw another, another donut, another MCM donut on the other side of the bowl. Now we have MCM on both ends, and these heat cases will continue pulling DNA toward them. And by doing that, it will continue to open up the DNA. Now, besides opening the DNA, there is something else that has to happen, and that is the addition of proteins that will keep the DNA in the single-stranded shape that, they, that it has adopted now something that will prevent DNA from being able to form a double-stranded molecule. These new players, the ones that are able to bind to the single-stranded DNA and keep it open, will be now represented by these dots, big dots. So these are proteins that have the ability to bind to the single-stranded DNA and keep it open. Protein that is in charge of doing this is, therefore, a single-stranded DNA binding protein. And the particular protein that does this job is also known as RPA, or replication protein A. So now we have a single standard molecule of DNA. And in this particular case, we're going to draw it as going. 5 prime n to 3 prime n. And this will be used then as a template for the synthesis of new DNA. Now remember, however, that the novel synthesis of DNA does not take place in the cell, because DNA polymerases are unable to start DNA synthesis the novel. Therefore, you need for another protein to do something first. And that other protein is the one that we know as primase. Primase will be able to synthesize a short RNA primer that will be complementary to the template that you have. And remember, this will be always done in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. DNA synthesis, RNA synthesis, they all work only in one direction, 5' prime to 3'. Prime. So this function of synthesizing that small 
primer is the function of primates. That's the enzyme that is doing that job. But primates doesn't come along to do its job. It actually brings another protein, another enzyme, when it comes to synthesize the small primer. And the enzyme that comes along with primates is a DNA polymerase. The type of DNA polymerase that comes along is the one that we call DNA polymerase alpha. And this DNA polymerase alpha is going to then extend the initial short RNA primer that was synthesized by primates. However, DNA polymerase alpha has very low processivity, and therefore it will fall off from the DNA template before it can introduce too many nucleotides in the new nascent strand of DNA. So after the initial involvement of primates and DNA polymerase alpha, this is all we have. A very short strand, and it's actually a hybrid. It's a hybrid of RNA and DNA. Now we need to start the highly processive synthesis of DNA, and that requires loading a clamped protein that will be the anchoring place for DNA polymerase for DNA replication. But in order for us to be able to load that anchoring protein, we need another protein, the so-called clamp loading protein. So clamp loading protein will come here into the DNA and will then allow the loading of the clamp protein. This is the clamp protein. It's another donut that will be embracing the DNA. The clamp protein is also known as the sliding clamp protein. And it's known by this name because it can slide along the sequence of the DNA. So the sliding clamp protein will be loaded thanks to the activity of the clamp loading protein. And once it is loaded onto the DNA, it will allow for DNA polymerase, which will be represented now by this big circular structure here, to come and join the DNA and remain bound to the DNA for as long as it is needed. And this provides high processivity to the process. Again, the idea of high processivity simply means that the DNA polymerase will remain bound to the DNA for as long as it is needed to continue replicating the DNA. Now, there are two different types of DNA polymerases that will be important at this level, and they are DNA polymerase delta and DNA polymerase epsilon. DNA polymerase epsilon will be the one that will take care of the synthesis of the leading strand. Whereas DNA polymerase delta will be the one that will take care of the synthesis of the lagging strand. And this requires for us to introduce those two new concepts, the concepts of lagging and leading strands. So let's take a few seconds and go into that concept now. When you first start DNA replication, the first thing that you have then is the formation of a very small primer that will then be extended by the activity of DNA polymerase. And keep in mind, this bubble will continue to grow going this way as well as going that way. So the bubble will continue to expand and move along the DNA, which means that these two strands of DNA will be able to continue being synthesized as the DNA continues to be open. So the synthesis of this strand of DNA, since it is moving in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, will be a continuous synthesis. That's what is referred to as the leading strand. And it's easy to see that in every replication fork, you will have the synthesis of two leading strands. On the other hand, it is also clear to see that as you open the DNA, you will be able to make short primers that will allow the synthesis of very short segments of DNA that will end right in the places where the DNA has already been put in place. 
And this is what happens with the other part of the DNA. This is what you would have if you look at only one of the halves of a replication fork. In one of the two strands, you will have continuous synthesis of DNA, as represented by the green line. However, on the other strand, the complementary, you will have synthesis of a short fragment of DNA. But then, before you can continue synthesizing that complementary strand, first you have to open the double strand of DNA. Let's do it now by deleting this. Okay, and now put in the complementary strand. Okay, so now we have the first fragment that was synthesized, and now in order to make more, to continue copying this complementary strand, we need to make another primer. There, we have made another primer. And now that primer will be extended. But when it is extended, it will be able to be extended only up to a place where you have already placed the previous primer. Therefore, this is what we refer to as the lagging strand. As you can see, this DNA is not going to be made as a continuous DNA. It will start and stop many times during its synthesis. And something important is that at the end of every junction between the newly synthesized DNA and the previously synthesized primer, you will have a small, small gap. Important, the red sequence is RNA. Whereas the green sequence that is shown here is DNA. And at the end, you have to have a double-sanded DNA molecule. These two strands must be DNA at the end. Therefore, you have to eliminate the fragment that corresponds to RNA. In order to do that, you first need to get rid of the fragment that is RNA. So you have to eliminate that fragment of RNA. And then, after you eliminate that, you have to put DNA in substitution. So now, another enzymatic activity will allow you to then fill in the gap that has been left after you eliminated the molecule of RNA. Now, that filling the gap is an activity that can be executed by the same DNA polymerases that were taking care of replicating the DNA, that is DNA polymerases delta and DNA polymerase epsilon. Now, since this is the lagging strand, most of the time this activity will actually be executed by DNA polymerase delta. However, after the gap has been filled in, there will be a small region here where you cannot make the phosphodiester bond that will join that 3' hydroxyl group with the 5' triphosphate group. In order to make that connection, after you fill in the gap, you need the activity of another enzyme, a DNA ligase. And this is another very important enzymatic activity during DNA synthesis. So the ligase activity is essential to prevent the DNA from being a broken strand of DNA. Okay, so let's now summarize the whole thing. The first proteins that were involved in DNA replication were the Oryx origin recognition complexes. They were the ones who were in charge of recognizing the places in the DNA sequence where DNA replication should start. That is the origin of replication. After the orgs, they were able to bring then the helicases. The helicases are the proteins that open up the double stranded DNA molecule. And once the double stranded DNA molecule is open, you have to maintain that open stage by bringing proteins capable of binding to single stranded DNA. And the protein that does this job is the replication protein ARPA. After you have then maintained the DNA as an open single stranded molecule, then you bring along primase, which is the protein that synthesizes a short RNA primer on the DNA. And that enzyme comes together with DNA polymerase alpha, and DNA polymerase alpha then synthesizes a very short segment of DNA. After that, you have to then establish the highly processive DNA replication stage, and that is done by bringing first a clamp loading protein, also known as RFC, then you have to bring the clamp protein, the sliding clamp protein, also known as PCNA. After PCNA has been put in place, and this is the donut that remains associated to your DNA, then you bring the DNA polymerases, either delta or epsilon, depending upon where you're doing uh, lagging strand synthesis. 
or leading strand in synthesis. And after that, you bring RNAs H in order to eliminate the short RNA sequences that were synthesized by primates. Then after that, you need to bring again the DNA polymerase in order to fill in the gap. Once the gap has been filled in, then you need the activity of the ligases in order to close the gaps that are left by the DNA polymerase. And that pretty much comprises the whole process of DNA replication.